Hollywood. The heart of the entertainment world. The Hollywood Palace. With your hostess, Diane Carroll. Tonight, the Alvin Ailey Dancer. John Viner. Godfrey Cambridge. Robert Cobb. Rudy Schweitzer. Stevie Wonder. We'll return to the Hollywood Palace after a word from one of our sponsors. Guess what I just happened to have? What? A leading antiperspirant print spray. Me too, but mine's dry band. Uh, mine has to keep me dry. So does dry band. Watch. Yours goes on like this. My dry band goes on like this. Mm-hmm. I see the difference. Mm, yeah. I I'll try it on my boss's glasses. Clear dry band helps keep you feeling clean and dry. You've had a hard day. Your head aches, and that makes you tense, and you can't sleep. You need new Excedrin PM, the nighttime pain reliever. Its special formula combines pain relievers with a nighttime relaxer that gently helps you to sleep. A new idea for you, pain relief and sleep, with new Excedrin PM, the nighttime pain reliever, when you've had a hard day. And now, here is your hostess, Diane Carroll! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Hollywood Palace. This is my friend, Yersha. Isn't she a beautiful dog? It's a Russian wolfhound. Very clever. The only problem is I can't understand a word she says. <laughs> Good evening. How are you, Carl? Thank you. When the moon is in the seventh house And Jupiter aligns with Mars Then love will guide the planets and peace will guide the stars this is the dawning of the age of aquarius age of aquarius aquarius
you very much. I love coming back to the palace because, well, not only does it give me a chance to sing and wear some beautiful clothes and work with marvelous stars, I have a marvelous time. I was talking to Bill Cosby, and he didn't agree somehow. He said he couldn't care less about wearing beautiful gowns. <laughs> so what I like best about the palace is that a performer can step out on stage in front of a live audience with a marvelous orchestra and once again feel that it's an opening night on Broadway. So what could be better to add to the excitement of a, of a glittering premiere than to present what I really think is the most thrilling modern ballet group in the world. They've been acclaimed by audiences through the United States and Europe, and here they are, for your enjoyment, the fantastic Alvin Ailey Dancer. <laughs> This next guest needs a special kind of introduction. So, as Georgie Jessel would say... Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> when during one of my proudest moments, of which there have been many, while being decorated again by Moise Diane, a young man entertaining the troops got my fancy, here he is, John Bynum. <laughs> Thank you, Diane. Thank you, George. <laughs> hey, you know how much uh, your line of work has to do with your personality? You never thought about that, did you? I'll give you a moment. <laughs> it really has a lot to do with your personality. And, and doing impressions and seeing public people, you know, people in the public eye all the time, I wonder just what people in show business, say, would, would do if they had another job. And Now, I live near a gas station. I leave my car there to be, uh, you know, fixed once in a while. And the guy that works in the gas station looks a lot like Rod Steiger. He really does. And look, if Rod Steiger hadn't been an actor, maybe he'd be a, a service station attendant. He's got the same build. And it, 
and you, you'd leave your car and go to pick it up, you know, and you'd say, well, uh, took care of everything. Have you got, uh, got any trading stamps? Well, no, well, no, well, no. <laughs> I took your car. <laughs> I fixed your car. I washed the windshield. <laughs> and the ties, and the ties are put again. <laughs> and you want stamps. What do you think this is, a post office? <laughs> I don't have stamps or wiki wiki dollars or little games, nothing. Now you get out of here, and you get out of here now. <laughs> Mister, come back, your car. You know, John Wayne, I just saw him in a picture, and he's very powerful, you know, he just gets right to the point, he's very blunt, he doesn't take no for an answer, he's... and I wonder, if John Wayne were a surgeon, if he'd have any tact or bedside manner. Well, I'm gonna have to yank it out of there. And do you know, do you know, my sister, do you know, do you know that David Brinkley was a high school dropout? It's true. It's very true. He, he was, and if he didn't have that, you know, that, that force that made him want to do something important, he'd probably be working in a, in, a, in a soda fountain somewhere, you know, working behind a soda fountain, and kids would come in and ask David Brinkley what kind of flavors of ice cream he'd have, you know. Hey, what kind of ice cream you have, Dave? We have vanilla. We have chocolate. We have raspberry. Why do we have raspberry? Because the boss likes it, he eats it, and so he must. Um, he must. Now, there's... There, you don't even have to think crazy. There's a new movie coming out. It's called Airport. Maybe some of you have read about it. And Dean Martin, in this picture, plays a commercial airline pilot. How do you imagine how secure you'd feel sitting back there? <laughs> oh, uh, would you like to ride in my... Oh, hello, everybody. This is your Captain Dino. Oh, we're going to go flying today. Yeah. <laughs> but there are, there are definitely some people who are trying to improve this. And one in particular, one person I know of, Tonto. Now, I did some studying on this, and Tonto, it, it doesn't come from as wealthy a family as the Lone Ranger. Really. I mean, the Lone Ranger, you know, he rides away, and he's this high old silver, and he doesn't care about money or anything. He just he has everything going for him. But Tonto, you know, he's got a straight... You know, I'm okay for you, Kim Sabi. But me, they come repress as scout soon, you know. But he, he, he wanted to improve himself, and, and he took... Uh, classes, late night kind of high school, you know, quick things, with, and he wanted to be an interior decorator so bad. Tonto, you know, he, got, he really did, folks. And he'd go to high school night classes for four weeks, and he was very proud. He finally got his diploma, and he came rushing back to the campsite one night, and the Lone Ranger was sleeping, you know, and the, Tonto was so excited, he ran over and he shook him, and he said, I said, Kim and Sabe. <laughs> rug? Try the new spray foam rug cleaner, Glory. You get instant deep cleaning foam. Sponge it in with a wet mop. It dries fast, usually two to four hours. Then vacuum. It's so easy you can clean your rug this afternoon, entertain guests tonight with Glory, new from Johnson Wax. You're polishing your polish. I'm not. You are too. I'm not. Are too. Bet. Bet. Think. By polishing your furniture week after week after week, in a few months you end up with about this much polish, right? Right. So all you're doing is polishing the polish, not the furniture. But you'll never have that problem with new self-cleaning favor. Favor conditions wood by cutting through old polish and dirt cleans it away. Now if favor can clean up that mess, it'll easily take care of any build-up problem you have and give you a fresh wax shine each time you dust. I've been polishing the polish. Polish with new self-cleaning favor with lemon wax, and you clear up your build-up problems, too. 
Through the years, the Hollywood Palace has presented the top names in entertainment. And here now is one of the world's greatest jugglers, whose hands are so fast, most girls won't go out with him. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Rudy Schweitzer. <laughs>
can't you give your mouth sex appeal. An Ultra Bright smile is a healthy smile because regular brushing with Ultra Bright means the freshest breath, the brightest teeth. Helps prevent cavities, too. Ultra Bright gives your mouth sex appeal. For a healthy smile, get Ultra Bright, the sex appeal toothpaste. For once, one of you guys is going to prove your detergent sample works. Mud, grass stains, egg yolk, beef gravy, you can get all that out. Yes, and more. Do it. It's called NJAX Action. Enzymes and extra detergent power working together. There. It did it. New Ajax did it. Ajax? Oh. Stronger than dirt. And now it's even stronger. Stronger than stains, too. <laughs> Good thing for both of us. <laughs> you know, every time I see this next star work, he just knocks me out. He really puts me away, as they say in our business. Talk about new and today and where the action is. It's where he's at. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Stevie Wonder. <laughs> Everybody's talking at me I don't need a word to say Only the echoes of my mind yeah. People stop and stare at me I don't even see their faces Only the shadows Skipping over the ocean like a stone. My heart, I love you, but you make me sick. You sing with such energy and conviction. And what is your secret? No big secret. I just sing from the heart and hope that my mouth will let it out. Oh. Stop reading those lines like that. <laughs> well, I've got my heart set on singing with you. Is that all right? I'll have to check with my mouth. Oh, it's being fresh again. <laughs> uh, what did your mouth say, Stevie? Delighted. Wonderful. <laughs> Why don't we take a little piece of some 
the sky hanging on a tree. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the way to start to make a pretty world for you and for me. And for the summer, find a lemon bright balloon you can hold. You see that little world of ours will be the prettiest thing. Oh, we can have it rain enough for a stream to hold our happy faces. If you want to breeze, I'll blow you a kiss for two. Oh, take me in your arms and my little world will be the place of places. Nothing else can make but breakfast and love. Yes, we will. I know together we can make a pretty world for me and for you. For you. That's what I'm longing to do. To make a world of me and you. Ah, yeah. Good job. <laughs> to give the stations a chance to take a breath and me to get my breath too. To really appreciate our cigar, you have to smoke their cigar. Take a puff on their cigar. Then take a puff on a white owl. Try this cigar test on us. Send your name, address, and name of any other comparably priced cigar to White Owl, Box 40, New York, New York. And we'll send you one of theirs, one of ours. White Owl, ours. Wow! I can't tell you how many cards and letters have poured in since the Alvin Ailey dancers appeared earlier in the show. <laughs> so by popular demand, we present Sinner Man with the Alvin Ailey dancers. <laughs> Run to the rock, rock won't you hide me? Run to the rock, rock won't you hide me? 
those who feel that entertainment is frivolous and show business is a continuous holiday. But entertainment also contains the presentation of beautiful words and phrases. And tonight I'm happy, very happy, to have as my guest a talented star who will read a famous piece by Thomas Paine, whose words written during the American Revolution are just as pertinent today, ladies and gentlemen. May I present Mr. Robert Culp. These are the times that try men's souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will in this crisis shrink from the service of his country. But he that stands it now deserves the love and thanks of man and woman. Tyranny like hell is not easily conquered and yet we have this consolation with us. The heart of the conflict the more glorious the triumph. What we obtain too cheap, we esteem too lightly. It is dearness only that gives everything its value. Heaven knows how to set a proper price upon its goods, and it would be strange indeed if so celestial an article as freedom were not to be highly rated. Why have the enemy left the New England provinces and made these middle ones the seat of war? Well, the answer is easy. New England is not infested with Tories, and we are. And what is a Tory? Good God, what is he? I would not be afraid to go with a hundred Whigs against a thousand Tories, were they to attempt to get into arms. Every Tory is a coward. For a servile, slavish, self-interested fear is the foundation of Toryism. And a man under such influence, though he may be cruel, never can be brave. I once felt all that kind of anger which a man ought to feel against the mean principles that are held by the Tories. A noted one who kept a tavern at Amboy was standing at his door with as pretty a child in his hand, eight or nine years old, as I ever saw. And after fee speaking his mind as freely as he thought was prudent, finished with this unfatherly expression, well, give me peace in my day. Not a man lives on the continent, but fully believes that a separation must sometime or other finally take place. And a generous parent would have said, if there must be trouble, let it be in my day, that my child may have peace. This single reflection, well applied, is sufficient to awaken every man to duty. I call not upon a few, but upon all. Not on this state or that state, but on every state. Up and help us. Lay your shoulders to the wheel. Better have too much force than too little when so great an object is at stake. Let it be told to the future world that in the depth of winter, when nothing but hope and virtue could survive, but the city and the country, alarmed at one common danger, came forth to meet and to repulse it. It matters not where you live or what rank of life you hold. The evil or the blessing will reach you all. The far and the near, the home counties and the back, the rich and the poor will suffer or rejoice alike. The heart that feels not now is dead. The blood of his children will curse his cowardice who shrinks back at a time when a little might have saved the whole and made them happy. I love a man that can smile at trouble, draw strength from distress, and grow brave by reflection. It is the business of little minds to shrink. But he whose heart is firm and whose conscience approves his conduct will pursue his principles unto death. My own line of reasoning is as straight and clear to me as a ray of light. Not all the treasures of the world, so far as I believe, could have induced me to support an offensive war, for I think it murder. But if a thief break into my house, 
burn and destroy my property and kill or threaten to kill me or those that are in it, am I to suffer it? What signifies it to me whether he who does it is a king or a common man? My countrymen or not my countrymen? Whether it be done by an individual villain or by an army of them? Let them call me rebel and welcome. I feel no concern from it. But I should suffer the misery of devils were I to swear allegiance to one whose character is that of a stupid, stubborn, sottish, brutish, worthless man. I conceive likewise a horrid idea in receiving mercy from a being who at the last day shall be shrieking to the rocks and mountains to cover him and fleeing with terror from the orphan, the widow, and the slain of America. There are cases which cannot be overdone by language, and this is one. By perseverance and fortitude, we have the prospect of a glorious issue. By cowardice and submission, the sad choice of a variety of evils, a ravaged country, a depopulated city, habitation without safety, and a slavery without hope. Look on this picture and weep over it. And if there yet remains one thoughtless wretch who believes it not, let him suffer it unlamented. Thomas Paine had an exceptionally beautiful way with words. It's too bad he's not around now. Well, you know, if, like the rest of us, if he were around now and still writing, he'd probably be writing for laughing. Oh. <laughs> he would. <laughs> it's amazing how many men of that time are, are still quoted today. That's true. Take, for example, Ben Franklin, statesman and writer himself. Mm -hmm. But he was also an inventor. Remember... You know, he tied a key to a kite string during a thunderstorm. Yes, I know. To this day, you know, if uh, anyone is electrocuted during a lightning storm, his family gets a royalty. <laughs> I it's guess true. you'd say then he was the first man to turn a lot of people on. Huh? <laughs> yes, the man, it's true. Oh. Ah, that, well, he's still turning them on with his uh, witting, witty, witty sayings from Poor Richard's Almanac. Which we happen to have right here in front of Indeed us. Indeed, we do. And Diane and I are going to lay a few on you now. You ready? They're ready. How do you like that? These don't even make me look like Aretha Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> Behave yourself, because the family gets a royalty on those too. <laughs> now, <clears throat> Mr. Franklin, you know, he was the kind of man who had a comment on just about everything. For instance, here, this is advice on marriage. Mm -hmm. Keep your eyes wide open before marriage. Half shut afterwards. <laughs> he had some other choice words about marriage. Epitaph on a scolding wife by her husband. Here my poor Bridget doth lie. She is at rest. And so am I. <laughs> But he did have some good advice to wives. Oh, yes, he did. He said, let thy maid servant be faithful, strong, and homely. <laughs> <laughs> I dig this one on relatives. Fish and visitors stink after three days. <laughs> yes, they do. Yes, they do. <laughs> and this is Ben Franklin's comment on beauty. He says, what is a butterfly? At best... He's but a caterpillar dressed. <laughs> this one is on Medicare. God heals and the doctor takes the fee. <laughs> and speaking of trust, he said, three may keep a secret if two of them are dead. <laughs> but he had a cynical outlook on friendship. No, he did. Yes, he did, as a matter of fact. <laughs> there are three faithful friends, an old wife, an old dog, and new money. Oh. <laughs> and 
And for some who got carried away with self-importance, mm. he said, he that falls in love with himself will have no rivals. Naturally, my man Franklin had his opinion of lady gossips. When man and woman die, his heart's the last part moves, her last, the tongue. <laughs> nasty, nasty. It was a nasty old man. <laughs> 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 Mr. Roberts, Mr. Roberts, would you... Oh, Mrs. Roberts, yes. uh, it's opening night, your son's first play. Uh, how do you feel? Wonderful. Uh, yes. Proud. Yes. Yesterday I was a nobody, but today I'm somebody. It's funny. Why? Well, my son's a scribbler. He always was. His handwriting is impossible to read, even a signature. But he wanted to be a writer. We figured he'd never make it on his own handwriting, so we got help. From whom, uh, Mrs. Roberts? Smith Corona. We gave him his first Smith Corona in college for Christmas. He did the thinking, Smith Corona did the writing. Wonderful team. And now we're all famous. My son, Smith Corona, and me. Uh, Mrs. Robbs, you keep talking about Smith Corona. You mean typewriter. Well, is there any other? Fred. Four out of every five electric portables in America are Smith Corona. This Christmas, buy your favorite student a Smith Corona electric portable. Who knows? Smith Corona could make you famous. You've heard the expression, always leave him laughing? Well, this next guest refuses to leave until you laugh. I don't think you're going to find that too much trouble because he's a comedian who has lost a lot of weight. But he kept all the funny parts. <laughs> he is the beautiful, the love of my life, Mr. Godfrey Cambridge. <laughs> That's the first time I ever kissed a hostess on a variety show, and I know I'm not going to get a whole bunch of nasty letters. <laughs> Written in pencil. <laughs> How you like the new body, folks? This is the new pretty me? Thank you. We lost a total of 170 pounds, and I hope Governor Wallace swallowed every ounce of it. <laughs> Now they are changing the Negro image in films. You notice that I say Negro, colored, black. Uh, Afro-American I find cumbersome. <laughs> I mention all of them, folks, because frankly, we haven't decided what to call ourselves yet. <laughs> As soon as we decide, you'll be the first to know. <laughs> of course, you know, it's great to be doing the modern films that are changing the image, because I remember when I was about nine years old, I couldn't figure movies out. I used to go see Tarzan pictures, you know. And Tarzan, I couldn't figure out, man, because here was a white cat living in the jungle. They never really tell you how he gets there. But here's a white cat living in the jungle who knows more about the jungle than the black cats who were born there. <laughs> Tarzan could run from, say, South Africa up to the Congo to do a job. Soon as he gets in trouble, he knows where all the vines are. <laughs> He's got the only interborough rapid vine system in the jungle. <laughs> the stage name, we take him express vine. And Tarzan got to a point where he could even talk to animals. I mean, like a lion. An angry lion would attack Tarzan like, ah! And Tarzan would go, Mashunga Ongawa! And the lion would go, hang <laughs> And the poor natives got to go over and say, uh, Tarzan, uh, would you speak to the elephants, please? They're uprooting the rutabagas again. <laughs> so they're trying to some kind of honesty in films now, you know, like they do guess who's coming to dinner. I saw that picture. Everybody told me it was supposed to be controversial. I said, what controversy? Guess who's coming to dinner asks a very simple question. Can a white, wealthy, liberal San Francisco family accept the marriage of their daughter to a typical Negro? <laughs> so we happen to be a combination of Jonas Salk, Albert Schweitzer, and a Jolly Green Giant. <laughs> what honesty. I mean, look, 
For example, is that scene with Kate Hepburn and the daughter in the room, where she says uh, to the daughter, she says, did anything happen in Hawaii? And the daughter says, no, mama. I wanted to, but he didn't. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> in today's permissive society, what she should have done was winked at the mother and said, Ma, have I got a new definition of black power for you? <laughs> I'm going to give you a little legal history because I feel it's very important that you learn our history, folks, because if you learn our history, we'll be able to respect each other better and we'll get along a lot better. Now, are you aware, dear friends, of the fact that Negroes are responsible for the naming of the sauce that we now call Worcestershire sauce? A significant contribution to our history, dear friends. You see, Worcestershire sauce, until many years ago, had no name whatsoever. It was just referred to as black sauce. No pun intended. <laughs> it was named one evening by a Negro gentleman who strode into a restaurant and ordered a plate of beans, and a waiter placed these beans in front of him on the table, and he placed this bottle of black sauce next to the beans. And the Negro gentleman, never having seen this black sauce before, he picked up the bottle and he said to the waiter, Worcestershire sauce! <laughs> I didn't want to leave you intellectually deprived. Thank you, God love you. <laughs> some tea, Professor. I'd love to, Jane, but tea stains my dentures. Tea stains? You need Efferdent tablets. Watch. It's turning blue. That means Efferdent's bubbles are scrubbing away its stain and odor. When the blue disappears, dentures are clean. I'll try it. Jane, your Efferdent gets an A+. Plus. Tea, it's back on my schedule. <laughs> Efferdent removes stubborn stains between teeth in minutes. When I'm flying, if I'm getting heartburn, uh, what you all call acid stomach, that's when I take Rolaids. Eating in the cockpit, you're in a hurry. It could give anybody an upset stomach. You can't stop the plane and lie down, so I take Rolaids. With Rolaids, I've never had any problem with heartburn. I keep Rolaids with me religiously. There's something there. there Running my hands through his hair Both of us thinking How good it can be Someone is speaking He doesn't know she's there I want him everywhere And if he's beside me I know I need never care Just to love him Is to meet him to share Each one believing that love never dies Watching his eyes and hoping I'm always there mm, to be there 
yesterday While my troubles seem so far away Now it looks as though They're here to stay Oh, I believe In yesterday Suddenly, I'm not half the girl I used to be. There is a shadow hanging over me. Yesterday came suddenly. Nobody can deny oh, there was something there to be there and everywhere here. Thank you. Once again, it's time to say good night from the Hollywood Palace. I'd like to stay longer. I really would. But I got to get home before midnight. Because when the clock strikes 12, I turn into a Julia doll. <laughs> so I'd like to say to all of you, and you've been beautiful, thank you from both of us. Good night. <laughs> Irregularity. Were you born that way, or is your system different? Some people think normal means daily regularity, but doctors say normal is what's normal for you. That's why Xlax doesn't try to prevent irregularity. It just helps you toward your normal regularity, the way your system is. However, age has changed it. Try chocolate at Xlax, or now unflavored pills.